Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we'll discuss an emerging phenomenon called the, quote, Fauci effect and other medical education related issues as we end 2020 and look forward to 2021. I'm joined today by Dr. Kimberly Lomas, AMA's Vice President of Undergraduate Medical Innovations in Nashville, Tennessee, and Dr. John Andrews, AMA's Vice President of Graduate Medical Education Innovations in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, last week, a story broke that may have been lost in all the vaccine news. It describes something called the Fauci effect. Dr. Lomas, what is it? Can you tell us more about it? Well, thanks, Todd. We've, we've noticed actually for the past several months, there's been evidence of an increased number of applications to medical school. And so it is a significant shift from recent years. And there are likely a lot of factors that play into effect, but one thing that's being highlighted is that perhaps students are admiring the role modeling that they're seeing in Dr. Fauci and others who are demonstrating significant professionalism and expertise and working under very adverse conditions for a variety of reasons. And so uh, I think naming it for Dr. Fauci is in honor of the incredible work that he and his team have been undertaking this year. Uh, but we can shout out to all of our health professionals who have been stepping up in a, in a really difficult time. Well, there are an awful lot of role models in physicians these days. Uh, Dr. Andrews, in fact, uh, Dr. Fauci said that he thinks the increase is really uh, belongs to local doctors. Do you agree? Yeah, well, I think that um, people considering careers in the health professions are seeing what's going on in their local communities. And uh, I would choose to believe that it's an altruistic instinct, that people are uh, appreciating the efforts that health professionals are making to confront the challenge of the pandemic. and. Um, are pursuing careers that might allow them to make the same contribution. You know, it may also just be the case that it's it's literally in the news. They're seeing it um, day in, day out. And for people who may be undecided about a future career path, um, as they look at what's going on in the world, uh, the health professions are really in the fore of that, and they probably see significant opportunity there. Dr. Lemus, we've talked a number of times over the past nine months about the impact that the pandemic has been having on medical school and medical education. How will medical schools handle you know, this kind of increase in applications? And you know, what is this going to mean for the profession down the line, uh, particularly in terms of residency spots? Well, I, you know, I think we carefully gauge our available slots to workforce needs and to any given program's ability to deliver the education that's needed. So I wouldn't necessarily expect a, a shift in how many students are ultimately accepted. Um, I do think that schools are very encouraged by the fact that, that students are stepping up at a time like this and are not afraid to enter medicine. It's very promising that we have the right kind of person who's coming through. And as those who are applying know, the whole cycle has been disrupted and the kinds of things that they would have put forth as evidence of their readiness uh, may have not been possible for them in the, in the recent year. Ex research experiences, global health experiences, clinical observation, things that they wouldn't have been able to accomplish. Uh, so schools will keep that in mind and be very broad uh, in their thinking about what are the features of the student that will go on to succeed in a time like this, but in medicine in general, where honestly we deal with much more uncertainty and ambiguity than many people might realize. Dr. Andrews, any thoughts from you on implications down the line in the residency and beyond? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure there are going to be any immediate implications in graduate medical education. I think it will be interesting to see whether this also has an impact on specialty choice. Um, obviously, graduates of medical schools go on to train in many different disciplines. And uh, when you talk about the Fauci effect or the impact of uh, COVID-19 on people's thinking about a career in medicine, I wonder whether we might see pe more people go into internal medicine, critical care, pulmonary medicine, the sorts of uh, physician roles that have been featured in the news in the response to the pandemic. And particularly around public health, do you think? Oh, certainly. Certainly. I think... Um, that broadens the conversation. I, I, in my mind, was thinking about applications to medical school and the path to becoming a physician, but clearly there have been significant contributions made by public health officials and epidemiologists and people um, who play roles well beyond the direct care of patients, and I think we'll see a significant increase in, increase in interest in those areas as well.
Well, one of the themes of uh, the pandemic has been, you know, everything that was bad beforehand has gotten worse, uh, revealing a lot of the, you know, the weaknesses in healthcare. And physician burnout is one of those things that's been at an all-time high throughout the pandemic. We've seen, you know, practices shutting down, physicians retiring early. Uh, you know, do you see this renewed energy of incoming applicants as a way to kind of counteract that? And, uh, you know, are students and residents still idealistic or is the pandemic starting to weigh in, weigh on them as well? Uh, Dr. Lomas? Well, certainly seeing students still come to the profession is encouraging to those who are doing this hard work that they know that there's uh, a cohort coming up behind them who have full understanding of what they're getting into and want to embrace that challenge. I think that all of our schools have been trying to teach around issues of structural determinants of health and health equity in this is going to make that all the more real for this group of students. And so we're likely to have trainees who are not only more receptive, but more sophisticated in their thinking around those things. Uh, but in terms of the burnout issue, you know, every time something inspiring happens around students, like our very own graduation celebration that we hosted, that was very inspiring to the practicing docs to see that that early process playing out um, with the next generation. So I definitely think it helps and, and it's an important time because we, we've talked about burnout from the clinician standpoint. We certainly have been concerned about the learner's well-being. Caught in the middle are our clinical faculty, our teaching faculty and the people who administer the programs in both the UME and GME level. They've had their own clinical demands plus restructuring an educational program on the fly to try to serve their learners as best possible. So really want to send out kudos to all those faculty who've worked hard over the course of this year to make the education as seamless as they can. They, they deserve a bit of a boost right now too. Dr. Andrews, what are we seeing on the resident side? Well, there, there's a natural process of renewal in residency. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things about residency training is every year, some trainees graduate and new trainees join a program. And I think as medical students, students are graduating from medical school this year, they're anxious to, um, to pursue their path to actually providing care to patients and contributing to the clinical response to the pandemic. So there's a lot of energy among graduates as they enter residency programs. That's infectious as they join colleagues who have perhaps been dealing with it for several months, if not a year. Um, and I think that helps to mitigate some of the burnout that residents are feeling. Um, they're experiencing the same uh, emotional and physical exhaustion that anybody in the health professions on the front line is experiencing, and um, we need to recognize that. Well, one of the, the big issues continues to be student debt, and it's obviously a huge topic conversation and advocacy throughout this pandemic. Dr. Andrews, you know, where does the AMA stand on that? What's the AMA's position on, on student debt? And, well, the AMA is sensitive to the issue, and in the um, stimulus packages that have been debated in Congress, the AMA has written letters to the federal government requesting consideration for people who are bearing significant debt loads in their training to contribute to the response. And uh, th we, there was a letter asking for at least $20,000 in tuition or debt relief um, for students and residents contributing to the pandemic response. Um, and then more recently, there's there's been a request for loan forgiveness um, for uh, people training in residency and contributing to the pandemic response. So the, the AMA understands the burden that that creates for people and the added stress in addition to the clinical response to the pandemic and is advocating for um, trainees to try to relieve that stress. Well, we're uh, nearing the end of the year and uh, you know, our conversations over the course of the past several months reveal a lot of the work that AMA has done to support students and residents. Where do you see the greatest opportunity for continuing this work in 2021? Dr. Lomas, do you want to start? Sure. I think, you know, we benefited a great deal from having invested in innovations prior to the pandemic and the resulting disruptions that we experienced this year. And so we were fortunate that some of the things that we were already working on, we could spin and use in a, in a quick manner. So part of the thing will be the lessons learned from this and what pieces of the changes that we made we want to preserve, we want to see move forward. Uh, so some areas like really focusing on competency development and what that means for each individual certainly came to the fore when we were contemplating whether students were ready to graduate early to participate in care of, of these patients. So that's one example of many things. Certainly our investment in health system science is another. The systems issues 
were very clear to everyone uh, as they watched the news going through this. So a careful thinking over the coming year of all the things that we adjusted, some of those are quite positive and they actually propelled forward things that we thought we needed to be doing. Some were modifications that we did that we probably will be willing to part with when they were just temporary to get through. So I think that's the next the next big step for us. Dr. Andrews? Your yeah, I, I would I fully support everything Dr. Lomas just said. I think the the wonderful thing to have seen is that innovations people have dedicated themselves to are really uh, seeing some practical application um, during this stressful time. And on the GME side, the pandemic has been quite disruptive to some of the experiences that trainees need to be eligible for board certification. And it's engendering um, a lot of flexibility on the part of our certifying boards and on the part of programs delivering curriculum to try to uh, manage toward uh, competence rather than the amount of time people have dedicated to these various activities so that we know they're able to perform when they graduate, but we're not rigidly holding to, to a time schedule that's been disrupted by the response to COVID. I do think, you know, to, to play off of that a little bit, I think we started talking about the Fauci effect, but I think one thing that's been very clear throughout is the contributions that our students and residents make to responding to the needs of patients and communities. And I don't want that piece to get lost. There's been the near peer effect might be just as powerful as, as someone at the highest level of Dr. Fauci. So recognizing and thanking all the students and the residents for what they've been doing over the year is an important step for us, I think. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lomas, Dr. Anders for being here and for all the work uh, that you've done throughout the year, you and the medical education team at the AMA. I'd like to thank also all of our partners across medical education for working with us and a special shout out uh, to the medical student and resident sections for helping us along the way. Uh, we'll be back soon with another COVID update. For resources on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for being with us and please take care.